Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining tonight's neighborhood meeting for the proposed Vine Tree Estate subdivision project. Uh, we'll get started in a few minutes uh, to allow people who are running late or who are having trouble getting on to be able to join the meeting. I do want to let you all know that this meeting is being recorded, so that way folks who want to view the meeting later or who are unable to attend the meeting today uh, can also view the meeting and participate. Uh, so I do want to just let you um, advise you all of that. And so we will get started in maybe about one or two more minutes to allow additional folks to hop on. So please hang tight. Okay, it's around 6.04, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, thank you all for joining tonight's neighborhood meeting for the Vine Tree Estates subdivision proposal. Um, I do also want to let you all know, in case you missed it earlier, that this meeting is being recorded. So that way, folks who are unable to attend the meeting tonight are able to watch it at a later time. Um, so please be aware of that. So tonight, we're just going to um, do some brief introductions um, about who is here from the city and also from the project applicant team. We'll talk a little bit about the purpose of the neighborhood meeting. You may recall um, there was another neighborhood meeting for this project in August of last year, and so this would be the second neighborhood meeting for this proposal. We'll go a little bit into the project background, and then the applicant who is proposing the pro project will have a chance to present the project. And then we'll dive a little bit into the next steps on the city side, followed by a chance for you all here to provide any comments that you may have and to ask any questions uh, regarding the proposal. So from the city of Vacaville here tonight, we have myself, my name is Noah Rambala, and I'm assistant planner with the city of Vacaville's planning division. And I'm also joined by Kristen Pollitt, who is our assistant community development director, who is also here tonight. And then we also have the applicant team, uh, Tom Filippi, and also David Roth, who is with here tonight. I also do want to note that we do have a few elected and appointed officials here today, including uh, Com Planning Commissioner Fortney and Planning Commissioner Rudin, who are also present in the um, in this meeting to observe the meeting and to listen to what you all have to say. So the purpose of tonight's community meeting 
uh, is to reintroduce the Vine Tree Estates project. As I mentioned earlier, we did have an initial community meeting where we did uh, introduce this proposal in August of last year, but the project now has a proposed general plan amendment uh, in order to potentially amend uh, general plan policies related to ridgeland preservation. And so we wanted to uh, disclose that to residents who are here tonight. We also want to provide, again, an opportunity for you all to ask questions and provide feedback on the proposal, and also to share with you all the next steps in the city's review process for this proposal. So the project consists of a request to subdivide uh, an approximately 19 acre vacant site located to the east of Vine Street and the west of Gable Avenue uh, in order to allow for the construction of 28 custom single family homes. And so this project consists of a general plan text amendment, a zoning map amendment, a uh, plan development, and um, also the tentative subdivision map. The city believes that a general plan uh, text amendment is required for this project and has also identified those other entitlements as being required. This project is designated in the general plan as uh, for residential estate development. So that's for projects that would have a density range between 0.5 units per acre to three units per acre. And then it also has a zoning of uh, residential estates with minimum 20,000 square foot lots. There is a hillside overlay because there is a hill on the site. And it's also subject to the Vine Street overlay, which has special standards for the Vine Street area in order to help maintain that uh, rural feel in the neighborhood. Uh, we did issue a new project notice in November of last year to inform you all of the project. Um, and this is the second neighborhood meeting uh, since that time. And so the project since the previous uh, neighborhood meeting for this proposal uh, now involves a general plan amendment request on behalf of staff's uh, letters to the applicant stating that we believe that this amendment would be required. And this is because there are a few general plan policies in the general plan that require the preservation of bridge lines. And the project proposal includes a request to construct a, single, a custom single family home on top of lot one as you can see in the image to the right, there is a hill on the site, and so the project is proposing to construct a residence on top of that hill. And so staff believes that a general plan amendment is necessary in order to um, in order to allow such a proposal to continue on in the development process. And so now I'm going to turn it over to the applicant team uh, so that they can introduce um, their proposal uh, to you all here tonight. Thank you, Noah. I appreciate that. We are proposing a 28 lot executive home subdivision. Uh, we would note that our, our proposal has not changed uh, since the project was first approved or submitted. The only change is uh, the requirement by the city staff to get a general plan amendment because of the proposal for lot one. Uh, next slide. This is a layout that uh, Noah has already uh, shown that uh, shows the 28 lots. Three of the lots uh, that are near the hillside will be much larger in size, and the others will range in size from 12,000 uh, square feet uh, on up. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a, a photo of the, of the site uh, from August of 2005. Uh, I showed this because uh, over the years I've lived in town, I'm aware of some fires that have been on the site. This is one that was after August of 2005. The other thing that this shows is that uh, historically, this hill has been used as a great motor motocross track and a dune buggy hill. Uh, and that was done until a uh, chain link fence was put up uh, a few years ago to stop that. But this is just shown to give some historical context and where we're proposing to lot one, where we're proposing for the hill would be uh, directly north of the church site, which is at the bottom of that of this picture. And the height difference between the church, which is already on that ridge, and the proposed site is about three or four feet. So it's that ridge is already has um, a, a large facility on it. We're proposing to... Um, to just simply comply with what's already in that area. Next slide, please. So there are already homes on ridge lines all throughout the Vine Street area. 
We, it is our opinion, uh, and I've been in this community for 44 years, it's our opinion that the general plan policies uh, speak to not these small ridges, but to something more pronounced like the old Rocky or the, the ridges between uh, Browns Valley and back, uh, Blaine Street area and the area to the east or west of town, excuse me. So this is one home that's on a ridge that was built not too long ago. Next slide. And this is a picture from lot one and you can see um, the homes all through the valley uh, that are all at the same elevation on top of ridges all throughout the valley. It's a beautiful valley and we are, intend to respect that beauty and to create some beautiful executive homes that are in keeping with the topography. Uh, the one home on lot one would be 3.1 acres. So it wouldn't be a very small lot. Next slide, please. And in, uh, in discussions with staff, uh, we have further indicated that we would limit the home on lot one to one story and provide significant landscaping. This is an artist rendering of what a home would look like. And you can see off to the right is the existing church to give you an idea of the perspective. Um, so next slide, please. And that, that first one was from Vine Street, and this is the same uh, picture uh, if we were to look at the site from Trower Park. And again, you can see the, the church property off to the left, um, which already has homes on that ridge. Next slide, please. And this is, uh, Noah had already prepared that. This is just a contextual photograph of the site to... Um, show the location of the property in relation to the surrounding area. Um, I know, I don't know if it's appropriate, but I can answer any questions that might come up. Yeah, thank you, Tom. So we will have a question session um, in a few minutes. I'm just going to present real quickly the next steps for this project proposal. Um, so we are, uh, as the city, continuing to collect public feedback on this proposal. Um, so if you come up with other comments that you may have later um, after this meeting, uh, feel free to email them to me. My contact information will be on the next slide. Additionally, we will uh, we have tentatively scheduled uh, an, a meeting with the city council to initiate the proposed general plan amendment to amend the policies related to uh, ridge lines. And so that's tentatively scheduled for uh, Tuesday, April 23rd at 6 p.m. And that will be in person at City Hall in the city council chambers. Additional notice will be sent in advance of that meeting, but we do want to let you all know about that at this time. And so you are all welcome to um, attend that meeting as well to provide comments in person to the city council. And so uh, once we get direction from the city council at that meeting, uh, staff will continue to evaluate the project for compliance with the city's uh, development standards and with the general plan. Uh, we will be also working on the environmental analysis required for the project. And then ultimately the project would uh, go before the planning commission and the city council for public hearings with the planning commission serving as the recommending body and the city council as the final decision maker. And so that concludes the presentation for tonight. Uh, my contact information is on the screen. Uh, if you would like to uh, give me a phone call or send me an email later on, if you have any questions or comments that um, come up after the meeting. Uh, if you want to view the plans or want more information about the project, the project website is also available um, at the bottom right of the screen. Um, but yeah, we're going to turn it over now for you all to ask questions or provide comments on the project. And I would ask that you use the raise your hand feature in order to um, ensure that everybody has a chance to speak. Um, so if you could, if you are on a computer, please use the reactions feature to raise your hand. And if you are on, if you are calling in by phone, please dial a star, I think a star, star nine to raise your hand. And so I see that Don Shepard uh, Stofflet has their hand raised. So Don, uh, you have the floor. Hello, thank you. Um, as a resident on Vine Place, uh, many of us have experienced issues with water and enough water pressure from the city. And the, this project specifically concerns us because of the issues with the water um, or lack thereof enough pressure 
to get up to our homes and how the impact of all these multiple units will create additional burden. And those of us that are, you know, having to install pumps just to get the water up our hills, um, what is the city planning to do about that issue? Uh, thank you for your comment, Don. Uh, that's definitely a concern that we do need to hear um, from residents who do live out in the area. Um, so we will look into that and I will also reach out to our colleagues in the utilities department um, to find out more about that. So thank you for that, Don. And Joy, I see that your hand is raised, so um, go ahead and unmute. Hi, Um. so my biggest concern, I mean, obviously the ridge line is a big concern for everybody. Everybody's wanting to know what that's gonna look like and how that's gonna impact the terrain. But more than that, I'm worried about the amount, the number of houses that's going to put in that area on Vine Street. Vine Street has historically had problems with uh, traffic and it's a very you know narrow street. We don't have a lot of um, through traffic coming back back and through you know back and forth. So it's gonna create a big problem on Vine. So I wanted to know what what the plans are for that. Uh, is that going to you know uh, with putting 28 families in that area, is that are we going to widen the war road? is how is that going to impact traffic in this area as well? as well as the water pressure. I mean, that's definitely the utilities is a huge issue out here for all of us. So um, when I saw 28 homes, I kind of panicked a little bit. I didn't realize that it was gonna be that big of a development. So. Okay, hey, thank you, Joy, for um, voicing your concerns about traffic and then also for seconding the water pressure concern. I will reach out to our uh, colleagues in the Public Works Department to also reach out to our traffic engineer as well um, regarding the traffic analysis for this project. Uh, Nadia, I see that your hand is raised, so uh, you can go ahead and uh, ask questions or provide comments. Yes, I'm a current resident, homeowner, and local real estate agent. I live on Wesley Avenue. My concerns are threefold. As a current real estate agent here in Vacaville, um, we know that there is a demand for um, room, uh, excuse me, room in our elementary schools. Um, so what is the plan for these families? What schools would they be assigned to? And do those schools have room for those students? My, my second question is related to traffic. Wesley Avenue is perpendicular uh, to Vine Street, and there is quite a bit of heavy traffic on Wesley. Um, and it, there is a blind hill you know when you come up over wesley you can't see cars coming down wesley this project will create more traffic on wesley and i believe create an opportunity to have <clears throat> potential impact on you know the safety of tra traveling on this road and then pulling out of our driveways on wesley avenue lastly what about the wildlife in the area um we moved to this area bought this house specifically because of the open space there are turkeys and <laughs> ducks and geese and deer and mountain lions you know what what is the plan for the wildlife that will be displaced um there needs to be some concern for that as well um and those are my main concerns all right thank you nadia for uh voicing your concerns uh, next up, we have Gerald Caban. Uh, feel free to unmute. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can. Yes. Uh, hi, Noah. Uh, my wife and I, our family actually has lived on Vine Street uh, for 14 years. And during that time, I can't stress enough the, the fact that there are so many people that use Vine Street as an access road from the other canyon to get to downtown. Speeding is an issue that happens every single weekend. We're out working in our yard. Since we've lived here, we saw uh, a crash right outside our house where two individuals um, died and four other individuals in a head-on collision right there where that curve is um, were badly injured. Um, we also had a few years ago, a 17-year-old 
boy who was speeding 70 miles an hour down this street uh, lose control and fly through our fence and take out two of our trees and a mailbox. So one of my major concerns, and I, and I hope a lot of the other people will indicate that speeding is, is really bad on this street. And it doesn't seem to be addressed by anybody at the city. And the plan that you guys have with the egress and ingress of this housing track is right over where people top the hill speeding. And I know for a fact that it's going to cause fatalities unless you come up with a different plan to how to handle the traffic and the egress in and out of this, this development that you have. So stop signs, we've asked for stop signs. We've been rejected time and time again. We've asked for speed bumps and signs, warning, even changing the speed limit. And again, we've been rejected. So I don't know how you guys are going to solve this problem. It is going to be a problem. And I hope you're aware of that. Anything else? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you uh, for providing your concerns. Um, Christy, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to add as we um, move forward through these comments, um, there will be a, a detailed environmental analysis done on this project with, in which a lot of these issues will be studied in, in detail. So I just wanted to add that to um, let everyone know that we will be looking at all of these topics. Awesome. Thank you, Christy, for providing that additional context. Um, next up, we have Christopher Jones. Feel free to unmute. Good evening, all. Can you hear me? Good evening. Yes, we can. All right. Uh, first, you know, I'm a local Vacaville graduated 1993. And I worked my butt off to be able to finally buy up here on Vine, and I live in Vineyard Hills Court. It took me from 1993 until two years ago. I bought up here because this is one of the last beautiful areas of Vacaville left. And I don't understand why it's got to be turned into profit. Second, <clears throat> we don't have the infrastructure up here. None of the neighbors, nobody who actually lives up here and resides up here as of right now, wants this to happen. This is a pure profit grab, nothing but somebody going after money. Why do us existing people who have paid millions of dollars to move up here, we've worked to get up here, why do we have to now have a 28-home subdivision that's going to bring, I don't know, the average home has four vehicles? So when every one of them has two teenagers and the two people work, we got four more, four more vehicles up and down Vine every day doesn't matter what you do with the infrastructure on the road system. It can't handle that. You're going to force the people who live up here to actually start moving out. It's already become quite the freeway due to North Vine being added to it. And like I said, I graduated but in you know, 1993. So as a high school kid, I used to drive up here. And dream to actually live up here this this is not not right not what should be happening i hope everybody actually votes this down that's it all right thank you christopher for voicing um your concerns i do also want to add that this project eventually will be going towards uh public hearings um including the one in april uh, for the proposed general plan amendment. Um, so I do also want to keep that on everybody's mind. Um, next up, we have Don Shepard uh, Stoffa. I, I believe you spoke earlier. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody else are, has the chance to speak. Um, so if you don't mind, uh, we I would prefer that everybody else who hasn't had the chance to speak yet to be able to speak, and then we can go for a round two later on in the meeting, if that's okay. Okay, so next up we have Angela. Angela, uh, feel free to unmute. Angela, are you there? 
<clears throat> okay, I see that Angela's hand is no longer raised. Um, so we'll move on. Next, we have uh, phone number, area code 707, ending in 736. Uh, feel free to unmute. Hi, this is Linda Hi, this is Jacobs. Here, let me move. Here, let me move away from the computer. Hold on. Um, I have lived on Vine Street for over 30 years, and we were part of the first, uh, not the first, for many years. We've been fighting a battle on Vine Street to keep it the jewel that it is, and we made um, the last fight that we had. Um, we made a compromise with the city. The city worked very, very hard to work with us. Um, all the neighbors dedicated their lives to fighting this battle. It lasted five years, and we dedicated our time, our money, our energy to saving Vine from the valley getting filled up across from me. And um, we won that battle, and the developer actually said afterward, after he made more money with the way we uh, desired it to be, he said he made more money than it would have been had he done it his way. And um, sometimes neighbors just know what their neighborhood needs because they live there. They um, invested their money there. And what drew them to that neighborhood um, might not draw somebody else. Vine Street is unique. There are sidewalks some places, no sidewalks other places. There are huge lots. There are million dollar homes. There are smaller homes. And um, it's, it's unique because it's a blend of city and um, county, all practically downtown. Um, the country road, all that. We, we fought for all that, so I shouldn't even need to say it. The bottom line is this, is we made a compromise with the city and we kept our end of the deal and we want the city to keep their end of the deal um, the city like i said worked so hard to have that custom overlay which includes the minimum house size and the minimum twenty thousand square foot um, lot size um, and so that is the bottom line is we want the city to keep the promise from the traffic circle on down vine they put that overlay in there so that street could be built out the way the city envisioned the way the council envisioned and the way the neighbors envisioned it to be and there are a lot of beautiful places in vacaville and we all agree on this and but vine is different than that a lot of people wouldn't want to live out on our street so um that's the bottom line and that's what we're asking the city is to keep their promise to us and the question that i have um uh, the engineer said we will be creative in our executive homes they've had that language and that is crazy that's not what the overlay was the overlay is is you are going to sell the land and Someone else, I mean, each individual person is going to build their home. And so when we keep the lot size, the minimum 20,000, people will be able to build a nice one story if they want. They'll be able to build the two story if they want um, under the, uh, the standards that have been set for those homes to keep them custom. So I don't like the fact that they're saying, we will be creative, creatively designing the executive homes. Well, no, the people who buy the land are the ones who are going to be creative in building their home. And um, I guess that's, that's it for now. Awesome. Thank you, Linda, for coming to the meeting, voicing those concerns. Um, I do want to clarify that at the moment, there are no homes that are being proposed at this time. It's only just for the subdivision of the land. Um, additionally, there are no changes to the Vine Street overlay that are being proposed at this time, other than the reduction of the minimum lot size from 20,000 square feet to 12,000 square feet. 
Oh, and oh, so I just have one more thing to add about that. Um, because of the topography in that area, um, this proposed shrinking that lot size so badly, which it shouldn't be because they were all involved or the engineer was involved in that promise with us. You know how hard, how hard everybody worked on this um, to create what we want it created. And, um, but when you look at that topography and if you shrink the, that lot size, what really will be the buildable area of that home? I bet there won't be room to build the the one story that people might want to build. So that was my other point. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Linda. Um, next up bye. we have bye bye. Next up we have Becky Ingram. Uh, feel free to unmute, Becky. Hi. Um, I think Linda took most of my points. <laughs> Um, I think that for those of you guys that were on the last meeting, and sorry, I hope you guys can hear me, I'm driving, but I've already voiced that I don't think there's anybody that loses more than I do on this project because um, I am that chunk of land that is cut out of this land mass. Um, I border on two parts of my property what will now be walls. Um, that are separating me from this proposed property site. So that is frustrating, I think on multiple levels for all of the reasons that people have already brought up regarding the wildlife um, that we see literally every day in our yard, the deer and the turkeys and everything else, um, as well as the safety of Vine Street. I've had, I've, I've been living on Vine since 2000, I'm relatively new since 2018, and um, I've already had my mailbox hit and knocked over, um, I want to say like six or seven times from speeders, from drunk drivers, etc. So that's wildly frustrating. And bringing more traffic to that area when I've called the city, um, I've called the police department and asked for them to do a review or more traffic stops and um, asked for speed bumps placed on the road and been denied everything. So that's really frustrating. Um, but I, my main question that I wanted to echo that Linda already brought up, the last meeting we talked about um, the lot one at the top of the hill and had mentioned that you know once you sell, again, like Linda said, that property, there's no way that you can just allow that you can suggest that it be a one story. And I think Tom at the last meeting, you affirmed this, that you can suggest that the home be a one story, but you can't force the owners to build anything. Like you, if they want a three story McMansion on the top of that hill, they get to build what they want to build. And that is, um, a real big concern of mine because that is the view that I get to see every day coming in and coming out. And it's not just a small ridge line, it's a big ridge line. That's that's the view that everybody on that little section of Vine Street gets. So um, that's a big concern of mine as well. I think that covers all of my uh, points. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Becky, for um, voicing those points. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Um, next up, we have Steve Jacobs. And I also do want to remind everyone, if you aren't uh, currently the one speaking, if you could please um, mute your mic, uh, just to be respectful of the person who is speaking. Um, but Steve, you got the floor. Oh, hi. Um, oh, hi. This, is this is Linda. I accidentally, I accidentally raised Steve's hand because I thought the computer was online. I see. Got it, Linda. Um, okay. he'll, send, he'll, 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 he'll email you his concerns, Noah. Okay. All right. Got it. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Danny Wells. Thank you very much. 
I am also a resident of Vine Street for over 20 years. And I, I, I've had property in different places over the years. And I've always been concerned when there's a group of people that um, enjoy, you know, paying taxes on uh, one acre or two acre plots and want to enjoy the open space of somebody else who's paying taxes on 19 acres. So unlike many here, I'm actually uh, for the proposal for the development. I would rather see a nicely developed neighborhood than that hill of brown weeds most of the year and that ugly cyclone fence. Uh, I'm not concerned about building on the ridge line because there's many homes in the area that are on the ridge line. Uh, I'm not concerned about lot size. Many people want to downsize their lots. They, they want to have smaller options uh, for those who don't want to landscape and maintain 20,000 square feet. Uh, I've lived in the area long enough and seen enough stuff happening that wildlife uh, has a way of adapting. Uh, sometimes it's a lot of wild turkeys uh, around my home and other times I don't see them for uh, several months or even a half of the year. And so the wildlife will, it, it will just adapt. Uh, two, two things that I think, and I think that I really appreciated Gerald's comments uh, who uh, talked about the speed and the, um, the increased traffic. And I think those are two things that should be addressed with, with this development consideration. One about speed. When we first moved here, the speed limit was 25 miles an hour and it was increased to 30 miles an hour. And not shortly after that is when the two people died on that collision. Within this one uh, mile of Vine Street, there, that's, there are nine signs that change the speed slow to 15, slow to 10, I mean, slow to 15, slow to 20, slow to 25, blind hill, can't see around a turn. So, so if, if the city would go back to the 25 mile limit, that's going to help somewhat. The other thing as far as increased traffic is when we first moved here 20 years ago, at the end of North Vine Street, there was a sign that said, future home of Vacaville Parkway which was on the city plan to connect Vacaville Parkway with Gibson Canyon. So that would allow people who want to get from one side of the valley over the Browns Valley side to go through that Vaca Valley instead of down Vine Street. So uh, I, th I think that we could uh, greatly el uh, eliminate a couple of the major problems with speeding by reducing the speed back to where it was at 25 and also considering that Vaca Valley Parkway connect, connection to Gibson Canyon, which would uh, dramatically reduce traffic and not have us be a thoroughfare. Those are my thoughts. Awesome, thank you, Danny, for sharing your thoughts. Um, so I'm not seeing any other new hands raised, but I do see that Dawn has her hand up again. Uh, so, Don, if you have any new thoughts to share that uh, haven't been shared by um, that haven't been shared at this meeting yet, uh, feel free to unmute. Uh, we'd love to hear anything new that you'd have to add. My question is, when and how will we get answers to these questions that were posed this evening and all of the concerns that have been posed? That's an excellent question, Don. Thank you for asking. Um, so we are documenting, taking notes on all the different questions and concerns that you're having, um, that you're expressing at tonight's meeting, um, along with the questions and comments that are also emailed to us. Um, so what will be happening is that as we prepare the environmental analysis for this project and also as we prepare the staff report for when the project um, is heard by the Planning Commission and the City Council, um, we will have responses. Um, we will have documented and uh, provide responses to all the different concerns and questions that are being raised at uh, both this meeting and also the past meeting. Um, and so um, if you are on the email list or if you're on the mailing list, you will receive a notice when the meeting is headed towards those public hearings. And so you would be able to view the staff report at that time um, to, to review the information on the project. Thank you. Okay. Um, Linda, I see that your hand is still raised. I just want to confirm uh, if you had anything new to add or if it's just left over from earlier. Um, um, let me see. If it's left over from earlier, I can hold um, it. Just let me know. Yeah, that must be from before. 
Um, so anyway, I just wanted to add one thing because of what Danny said. I appreciate that all the things he said. I just wanted to add that we're not against development, and I want to make that perfectly clear. We just want what was promised to us. Um, people can build smaller houses all over the place in Vacaville. This is the one place they can build their big custom dream home. That's what I just want to add from his comment. All right. Thank you, uh, Linda. I'm going to lower your hand for you, uh, but thank you for sharing that. Um, okay. So I don't see any other raised hands. Um, in case you are having trouble raising your hand, that's okay. Uh, feel free to unmute and I will see that you're unmuted and um, call on you to speak if you have anything new that you would like to add. Um, and so, yeah, just feel free to unmute if uh, there's something that you'd like to share. Otherwise, uh, we will be ending the meeting here tonight. Okay, so I'm not seeing anybody who is unmuting their mics. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and end tonight's meeting. I want to thank you all for attending and for coming to share your thoughts and your concerns about the project and also for asking all those really good questions. Uh, as I stated earlier, we are documenting all of the concerns and questions that you have so that way uh, we can look into them more and provide formal responses as part of the environmental analysis and the staff report when the project eventually goes to uh, the decision makers. Additional notice will be provided in advance of those meetings so that way you're aware and you can attend those meetings and review the staff report at that time when it is published. And also, if, as always, if you have any additional comments or questions that uh, that you might think of after tonight's meeting. My contact info is on the screen, so please feel free to give me a call or send me an email um, so that way we can document your comments and also uh, be prepared to uh, have responses to them um, as we look more in into uh, whatever concerns or questions you may have. But I want to thank you all again for coming to tonight's meeting um, and hope you all have a good night and a good weekend. Good night, Vacaville. Thanks, Noah. Thank you.